This is the daily video update for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. All this week, uh, we're playing excerpts of a conversation that I had with the Reverend Kara Rockhill, an old friend of mine from seminary. Kara and I talked six months ago near the beginning of the pandemic about what ministry looked like in Massachusetts and in Lincoln, and we're revisiting our conversation uh, from back then and, and how things have evolved uh, in, in both of our contexts since then. Uh, it's pretty, I, don't know, I guess, steady as things can be right now with all of the ridiculous upheaval all over the world, and especially in this country. And um, I don't know, I don't know what it's been like in in Lincoln. Uh, I live in Cambridge, uh, and Boston uh, was a very early hotspot, um, and has continued because of our a lot of things about the Boston area. Massachusetts has continued to have up and down numbers. Um, I have a little up one right now, but like as I'm looking out at the street, everybody I can see is wearing a mask. Um, you know, we're taking it really seriously, and and part of that, part of that is really reassuring, and then part of it is just terrifying that this is the reality that we live in. Um, and then it, and then part of it, you know, I get really scared when I like in the back when I went back to Maryland and we popped over to Virginia and like, uh, it's a different world. Um, it's like life, life down there hasn't changed. Yeah. Or like, like folks are still eating at restaurants and are doing all the things they might have a mask under their noses, but I'm just like, I, this is not, I, <sighs> so, um, I'm grateful to live in a place that's taking it seriously. Life has definitely changed. Uh, even from April life is, different. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea what it's going to look like when we do this again in six months. Hopefully, yeah, well, hopefully well, I've been outside a little more. I don't know. What, what, hmm. I don't know. One of the things that I'm, I'm really spending a lot of time with right now is how are we going to do the winter? Yeah, right. That's at least out here. Yeah. So we're doing in-person outdoor service. Right. Uh, that we were, folks are stationing around these, um, I spray painted some lines about 10 feet apart all over the parking lot, uh, which was a fun day, actually. Um, and so we're doing that right now and we bought some big heaters, but um, I think that's probably only gonna get us through October, yeah. which is looming. And then and it's like, well, then what? Right, and you have like, you're gonna get like 700 feet of snow because you're in Nebraska. Um, <laughs> it's just very cold. It doesn't snow a lot in the winter here. Okay, it's okay. like regularly well below 10 degrees. That is, that sounds very unpleasant. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, I think that's the, that's both the thing that I really am worried about right now and, and also yeah. my, my wondering is like, how do we, how do we maintain a sense of connection that's been hard enough now, but at least, you know, at least now people have been able to put masks on and meet in their backyards. We've done that yeah. a couple of times, but um, that is, that is about to not be possible. So what are the things that we put in place now while it's still reasonably warm out in order to get through? Yeah the next six months because between winter the pandemic and and november 3rd um it's gonna be an intense well, winter. it's gonna be an intense winter yeah i um and i think depending on what happens after november 3rd there might be a real need to be in community yeah. like i um uh the the uh, i've shared with a lot of people that Ruth Bader Ginsburg was was one of my just inspirational figures. I was a lawyer before going to seminary. Um, I gratefully walked through the doors that she opened and did my best to keep them open for people behind me. Um, but like I, she's this tiny human and I proudly stood in her shadow um, to just be able to go to law school. <laughs> um, uh, and, and after you know, after her death, I just wanted to, I just wanted to hug my people. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to hug my people. And you know, we, 
it, it could do that. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's hard, which is, you know, and, and six months ago, it was hard that it, it, we couldn't do communion. Um, and some churches are, have started doing communion. We have not. Um, so I haven't had communion in six months. Uh, which I think if I were Catholic might be long enough that I'd have to go to confession for it, but I'm, I'm not, so we're okay. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's, there's, there's this reshuffling and restructuring of the things that matter and how they matter. And um, I think that for most of us, it's, we've, we're longing for that human connection. You know, we have that, that small group of people. I think a lot of us have like those little, <laughs> those little groups of people that like will agree to be in, in places with you that are still socially distanced. Um, but uh, it's, you know, can't do that with everybody and um, we still can't hug yeah. and, or, you know, like touch and, uh, and that's, it's tough. And, and as we're doing this restructuring, the thing that we're finding that we're missing so much is, is that genuine human connection, not just the, you know, not just how we interact over email and on Facebook, um, even, even just how do we, how do we talk when we're together, but like the, you know, how can I show you what's actually wrong with my soul and will you respond to it in a way that, that feels safe and, you know, in a lot of different ways feel safe. And hopefully we'll, hopefully we'll figure that out. <laughs> nice and easy, right? Yeah. Well, we'll have more excerpts uh, from the conversation that Kara and I had as this week goes on. See you tomorrow. <laughs>